Hello you awesome guys and girls, I'm Anthony aka Mad Wizard and welcome back to the workshop. Yes, finally we are doing a big sword build. Yes, sorry it's taken so long as I say I wanted to do a load of um, other things before I got to this but finally we are here and we are going to do a big sword build and what are we going to build? Well, if you haven't noticed up above the screen already we are going to build two, yes, two of these. This is Kratos's Chaos Blades from God of War. Oh, I've been wanting to do this project for so, so long now. And finally, we get round to doing it. And uh, this is actually the size that the sword is going to be. So what I did is I, um, I went on the internet and I found a picture of the actual uh, blades to uh, make a template of because I'm going to be laser cutting this out of steel and because it's quite I would say an iconic blade like you know I wanted to get it right you know sort of thing I wanted to get the size measurements right I wanted to get all these spikes in the right place and the skull and everything but yeah this is how big it's going to be like you know I mean you can see just how big it is and we've got two of these and we've got to put the chains on the end of it as well so yeah <laughs> really looking forward to this project cannot wait to get started and uh, yeah it should be fantastic so anyway no time like the present let's do this thing
<sighs> She's ground to shape. I'll go grab a drink. And then there was two. So there we go, she's all ground to shape. Now the eagle-eyed viewer would probably be looking at this and seeing quite an obvious design flaw. Where's the handle? Well, basically the reason that I've decided to cut it out like this is basically one, because by doing it this way you save on material, but two is also that we're gonna be welding on a handle here anyway, so it doesn't really matter that we haven't got a handle on at the moment. But a lot of people will probably be looking at this saying, well, if you weld a handle on here, wouldn't this be a weak point? Well, it depends on how you weld it up. And this is basically how I'm gonna do mine. So normally how you would do this, or if you were just joining uh, two pieces of metal together, I mean, if this is the sword there, what you would normally do, um, if you're creating a wall hanger, or as I say, just joining two pieces of metal together, you would just put a handle on there, and you'd weld it just across there like that. And you'd do that on both sides. So this would have two points of contact. However, that's okay if you were doing a wall hanger, but as for uh, something that's going to be um, having multiple hits, I mean, I go out and I whack pieces of wood and bottles and crates with uh, the swords I make, so something like this, unfortunately, wouldn't be strong enough um, to withstand the pressures that it's going to be put under because it could bend, it could flex, or even worse, it could just break off uh, on this point. So basically the way that we alleviate that problem is that let's say this is the back of the blade there so like you know the blade would go over there like that. What we would do instead of just joining the piece on like that what we do is we cut a notch into the back of the piece like that and then this is only probably about an inch into the back or something like that and then we insert the piece of steel that we're going to use as our handle into that slot and then we weld it on there, there and there on all three sides and then we turn that over and we do it again. So instead of having two points of contact, so one on this side, one on that side, we've now got six points of contact on here. So basically, um, this prevents it from basically moving up in that. These two prevent it from going up in that direction, and this one prevents it from going in that direction. Or basically, by having six points of contact, it prevents this handle from basically moving in a whole 360 degree um, sort of motion instead of say this one where it could break this one just has a lot more structural support to it to than this one so yeah so basically that's what we're going to do uh, or that's the next job so yeah
Okay, so what I've decided to do now is that I'm going to start putting the bevels on the blade. Now, normally I would do this right at the very end, but uh, what I've decided to do with these particular blades is that I'm going to actually whirl, weld the um, cross guard actually onto the actual uh, blade itself this time. Why I'm doing that, it's just for ease of use, and I couldn't see the point of having it removable, so I've just decided to weld the whole thing on. But if I weld the whole thing on now, unfortunately, it's not going to sit flush because it would be thick here and thick there so it wouldn't give a nice straight edge or it would be a nightmare for me to put the bevels in and sharpen it so by me putting them in now then what I can do is sort of like I can put the bevels in, weld the cross guard up, do obviously the handle and the pommel and all that sort of stuff and then at the very end then I can just put an edge on it and sharpen it and uh, yeah she'll be ready to go so it's beveling time. Plasma cutting, lots and lots of plasma cutting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is that we're going to actually do some forging, yes. Uh, so basically the next task uh, that I want to do is um, on here, as you can see, uh, he's got some teeth on the skull uh, sort of cross guard sort of section. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to fire up my forge and we're going to forge them out. So I've already had a bit of a go, as you can see on here, doing a tooth. This is just some... Um, 12 mil round stock and I say I've just been having a play about forging one of the teeth out there so um, yeah it's gone really really good so we've done one we've just got to do the other 15 now so we're gonna fire up the forge and uh, give it a go also if you haven't seen me building this forge yet I say um, go check it out I say it's a really good build if you're interested so yeah that's the next job
is one forged tooth. Hot cut off. Right. Just got to do another 14. Well, they're all done. Time to brush me teeth. So I've been cutting out all these pieces with the plasma cutter and uh, I've got the base plate here. So this piece is going to be the cross guard and uh, this is going to be like the base plate for the cross guard. So this is going to be welded on. So I've just drilled a couple of holes where I'm going to uh, spot weld that onto the blade. So I mean this is the base plate and then I've got uh, another piece that goes over the top. Sort of like that. And then I've still got more pieces to cut out and then all these teeth that I've recently done, I'll say they will go sort of in there like that sort of thing and then that will all be welded up and stuff like that. Still not too sure what I'm going to do down here yet and I've still got to do like this piece and that piece it's kind of sort of cheek bit that sort of sticks out and then you've got the eye that's here and also you've got some more spikes that go here so i might end up forging like some more of these out and then sort of putting them like there and right there or something like that you know and then all of this is going to get blended in with like weld and stuff like that and then i'm going to grind some lines in to make it look a bit more organic but as I say, like, you know, it's not finished yet, but it's sort of like you guys get the idea, so that's basically what we're going to do. After welding. And then after it's been welded, after grinding. Mm. So this is only just a rough grind for now. I've got to go back and sort out all of these bits and pieces. And I'm in two minds about forging some more spikes like this for the bottom here. So I only really got to do one in here and then maybe a little one in here. Um, but if I do like a big one and maybe split it in two or something like that, then I can weld it on both sides. So, yep, basically finished the welding on these two. And I've just done a rough grind on there. But I'm really happy with like the way this has come out. So I want to try and replicate that if I can. So, yes. Still a long way to go, but we're getting there. More cutting, more grinding, more welding. So what I've done here is I've just drawn some lines um, onto the uh, cross guard here and I'm going to engrave all of these lines here because like looking at the picture here it's got like a real organic sort of look so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and replicate this onto this flat piece here to give it some sort of like three dimension all sort of look sort of thing and then I've got to repeat that on here that I haven't done yet but I'm kind of experimenting on this one and then it's sort of like because I've had to change a few things on this and it's like I don't like this or I, I wanted to add this or change that and stuff like that so I'm sort of experimenting on this one and then when I'm happy with the way it looks or with the technique that I've um I've been using or something like that then I'm going to sort of like replicate that on here because then otherwise if I'm doing both of them at one time and there's something I've got to uh, change or I don't like or anything then I've got to like take it off of here and here and then I've got to change it on here 
and here. So it's a case of sort of like, if I don't like something on here, or I want something changed or added or something like that, I can do it on just one piece. And then when I come around to do the second one, then I can just change it however I am. So basically, yep, all these lines have to be ground in. So uh, yep, get the old die grinder out and uh, yeah, do that. So this is why it looks like ground and polished a bit. So I've given it just a quick uh, brazing with the uh, brass brush just to see what it looks like. And I think what I'm gonna do is um, antique it a bit. So sort of uh, when I come around to actually rebrassing this, I'm gonna sort of like antique it a bit with some of my uh, blue solution I've got over there. So I'm just adding some weld to this bit to give it a bit more of a gum line. And I'm gonna add something here to give the, uh, the base a bit more thickness as I turn it over. You can see here, so this will be ground down and give it a sort of like a lip, like, you know, sort of like the teeth going into the gum line. And this is just a piece of square stock. Um, not too sure what thickness it is. I think it's like five, six mil thick that I've just welded on and that'll be ground flat on both sides. And that just, if I come down here, you'll see it just thickens this piece up slightly so that I can put a nice thicker handle on there. So, right, but uh, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I've just cut out these little pieces here, and what I'm going to do is uh, for the bottom here is that I'm just going to taper one of these ends and forge it out a bit, and they're going to go on there like that. So, the tapered bit will go on this piece here, and then it'll just all be filled up with weld so like you know it'd be filled up with weld in there so it looks kind of like that on both sides so yeah so a bit of a change of plan with these i've decided just to weld them straight on i've been having trouble with the forging so uh i've just welded them on and ground them down so the plan is is that because I've been doing like well grind, well grind on all of this, I'm just gonna repeat the process on here because it seems to be working. And uh, yeah, I would have liked to have forged them out, but uh, say la vie, I mean, uh, we'll get the job done. Oh well, the joys of metal work. 
So after a hell of a lot of welding, grinding, cutting, re-welding, re-grinding the cross guards are finally, finally finished and they are looking amazing. Oh, I am so, so happy with the way these have come out and obviously they're double backed as well as you can see, looking good. So the only thing left to do with those is uh, to brass them and I'll say I need to just do a small few last fettling jobs on there but apart from that they're pretty much ready to go and uh, so right the next job is uh, we need to get on with the handle so I've just got this scrap piece of wood here and also I'm just going to cut cut it up and uh, cut a slot and put them on yeah and then uh, that'll be the handle done and then uh, as I say we can get on with the pommel Right, so now that the uh, handle's all roughly ground to shape, I'm gonna start work on the pommel. So what I've decided to do is, looking at the template here, I'll say it's uh, a bit of an interesting shape. I mean, it's got like this round bar around here and then it sort of like chamfers in here. So it's quite a thick pommel, but then as I say, it's got this decorative thing around. So what I'm gonna do is, um, if you watched uh, my Roroni Kenshin build, uh, the cross guard that I built for that, which was basically, I had some plate steel here and it was round and then I had some round stock and then I heated and bent that round the piece, which is basically what I'm gonna do here. So, um, also, this has got like a slight bend in it as well. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna cut out the pieces from here first and then I'm going to uh, sort of like do all um, like 
sort of like any sort of sculpting and 3D stuff that I need to do on there. Then I'm going to bend the uh, the round bar around it, weld that all up, and then once I get that to a um, a semi stage that I'm happy with, I'm going to put it in the forge, and then I'm just going to put those slight bends in it that are here and here. So basically, it's going to be flat. And then as I say, I'm just going to put this slight bend in this way, and then I'm going to put a slight bend in that way, so it gives this this sort of dimension. Also, what I need to do as well is I need to slot the back um, of the handle as well, so that I can put a thread in there, uh, and the thread's going to go straight through the pommel area, and then I'll attach it with a bolt on the end, and that won't be much of a problem, because as I said, we've got to put the, the chain, the chain's got to go on the end there as well, so uh, yeah, that's the next job. So hit a bit of an unexpected snag in the road as I was working on this piece for the pommel. Um, my grinder decided to die. Um, so after spending about an hour taking it apart, trying to see what's wrong, fixing a few things, putting it back together, finding out it's not working, changing the plugs, doing this, doing that. It's just still not working. Like, you know, I cannot figure out what is wrong with it. So, I mean, I've had to accept that it's probably given up the ghost. So, I might be able to fix it. I don't know. But to uh, save time and effort and stuff like that, because I want to get on and stuff like that, I've done the wise decision, which. And I've just gone out and bought myself a new one. So, uh, out with the old, in with the new, as they say.
so this is before grinding or after welding and before grinding and this is after grinding bit of a difference still need to do a few spot welds in there that I missed and on the back but yeah that's before that's after So in the video game and actually uh, in the license copies as well, there's a chain that goes onto the back of the pommels. And uh, I think actually in the video game that sort of like when he actually gets given the blades, that um, sort of like there's a chain that sort of like attaches the uh, swords to his arms or something like that. So anyway, we need some chain, which comes in the form of this big, long, heavy chain. And... Uh, nice and rusty which is basically the look I was going for and uh, believe it or not I found this in a skip but don't tell Kratos yeah so basically what we've got is one of these pommels and we need to put this onto there like that easy of course <laughs> So right now the pommel's on. Oh, she's looking fantastic. Oh, we are so, so close now. So, so close. As I say, all we've got to do now is that I just need to do a bit of um, de-rusting on the blade and then just a final sharpen on that and just age it and patina it. Uh, the uh, cross guards and the pommel just need a quick clean up and then as I say, they can be brassed. The handle just needs some slight more profiling to match up with the uh, cross guard and the pommel and then that can be wrapped in leather and as I say I might just patina the chain just slightly but as I say we're nearly there nearly nearly there <laughs> and she is looking awesome oh <laughs> right let's finish this So here you go, all done. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, I am so, so happy the way that these have come out. These look absolutely awesome. Um, when I decided that I wanted to actually do um, the Kratos blades, um, I just remember going back all those years ago when I first played the first game and just seeing these swords for the first time or the blades, whatever you want to call them, and I was like, wow, I need to buy, own, or build that someday, like, you know, and now I've actually finally got one. It looks like it's just come straight out of the game. Oh, this is just, oh, this is so cool. Um, as I say, they're really heavy, like, you know, they, as you can tell, I mean, it's not the heaviest thing that I've ever built, but, um, as I say, like, you know, because of all of this weight is just going on into your one hand, you know, I say it's pretty heavy and then you've got the chain attached to it and everything but I just love the way that the aging has come out on the blades and as I say the skulls and everything so but as the other saying goes it looks a secondary to performance so time for some glamour shots and some field testing cue the music So there you go boys and girls, hope you enjoyed the video, if you did like the video give us a big thumbs up down at the bottom of the screen there and of course if you're new to the channel subscribe so you never miss an episode. I do lots and lots of videos like this, building weapons from video games, anime, manga, you name it. Um, also if you watched my previous video you might have heard that I'm putting together a website, now I did want to actually launch the website with this video however unfortunately there's still a few little niggly things that I'm having to sort out um, with regards to the website but I'm hoping to launch very very soon and as as I say, if this is an old video, links to the website will be down in the description box below. So on the release of this video, hopefully it might be up by the end of next week or possibly sooner, I'm not too sure just yet. But as I say, I'll keep all of you guys and girls know. And as I say, check out my other uh, social media sites. All of the links are down in the description box below. So till next time, see ya, bye.